Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Birla Soft Limited Q2 FY23 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anirban Thakur. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Pajan, and welcome, everyone. This is Anirban from Investor Relations team, and joining us on this call, we have our CEO and MD, Mr. Dharmendra Kapoor, DK as we call him, our CFO, Mr. Chandrasekhar Tagalagan, Chandru as we call him, Mr. Doof Singh joining from US, our Chief Business Officer, Mr. Sri Ranganath Kulkarni, SK as we call him, our Chief Delivery Officer. And we also have with us Mr. Arun Rao, our Chief People Officer. We will begin the call with the opening remarks from Mr. Kapoor and then Mr. Chandu. Please note that anything that we say on this call on the company's outlook for the future is a forward-looking statement and must be read in conjunction with the disclaimer mentioned in our Q2 FY23 investor update, which has been sent to you and also uploaded on the stock exchanges. With now, I ha now hand over the call to DK. Over to you, DK. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Anirban. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the last of second quarter financial year 22-23 earning call. Uh, we continued our steady performance in the second quarter with revenue at 148.8 million, uh, registering a sequential growth of 0.1% and a year-on-year -year growth of 8.7%. Sequential growth in constant currency terms is at 1.1%, and year-on-year -year constant currency growth is at 11% for quarter two. New deal momentum continues to be good, with new deal wins at 138 million in quarter two, up by 32.6% on a year-on-year -year basis. In fact, this quarter is probably the best quarter in the last four or five quarters that we have seen from the wins perspective. The TCV for the quarter was also healthy at 166 million. EBITDA margin, EBITDA margin stood at 14.8%, up 9 BPS quarter on quarter. Chandru will provide more color on the margins later. In quarter one, we had switched to reporting attrition, which is more in line with the industry. The good news is that we have seen a further drop in our LTM attrition number, which fell from 27.9% in quarter one to 27.4% in Q2, a drop of 50 BPS. While it still remains elevated, we expect to see further improvement going ahead this will help to support our margin in the future. When I look at the impending uh, attrition for the current quarter, which is quarter three, it is already uh, showing very healthy signs with respect to that attrition lowering down uh, to the level where it will start getting comfortable for us. Uh, profit after tax stood at 14.4 million and was up 2.9% year on year and down 7.6% quarter on quarter. Uh, when we look at the uh, uh, PAP in rupee terms, it was at 1,151 million, up 11.6% year on year and down 4.7% quarter on quarter. In terms of verticals, the growth was led by GSSI and CMT under manufacturing. DSSI was up 15% year on year and 7.7% quarter on quarter, while CMT was up 19.4% year on year and 5.6% quarter on quarter. Horizontal growth was led by business and technology transformation, which saw a growth of 17.5% year on year 
and 3.4% quarter on quarter. And cloud and based services, which by growth of 10.4% year on year and 6.2% quarter on quarter. So if you really look at the services or the horizontal, it is very much on the expected line and the trend that we are seeing in the industry and we are able to align ourselves very well with the industry. Growth continues to be driven by larger accounts with top five, top 10, and top 20 customers continue to grow at 13.8%, 13.4%, and 13.1% on a year-on-year -year basis, respectively. Our year-on-year -year customer count of $5 million revenue improved by seven, and that of $10 million plus improved by two. Active customer count remains steady at 301. The headcount at end of 30th September showed at 12,758 and saw an addition of 193 professionals quarter on quarter and 693 professionals on year on year basis. We have hired 253 freshers in quarter two and plan to hire approximately 500 in the next half of the financial year 23. Birla Soft continues to get various recognition. Birla Soft has been recognized as a U.S. mid-market leader in the SAP S4 HANA system transformation in the ISG provider lens SAP ecosystem report. This is the second consecutive year for Birla Soft to be positioned as a leader in the U.S. mid-market in SAP S4 HANA system transformation space. Birla Soft has strengthened its relationship with SAP by leveraging RISE and SAP to transform its digital landscape onto the cloud with enterprises adopting a cloud for strategy. This move will enable us to accelerate our client's transformation journey substantially. In conclusion, as the uncertainty around the macros have increased with respect to the impending recession and the geopolitical issues, we continue to remain watchful. However, we expect opportunities in the digital and cloud ecosystem to remain very resilient. With this, I would like to hand it over to Chandru. Chandru, over to you. Hey, thank you, DK. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let me take you through some financial highlights for the quarter uh, Q2 by Revenue, as DK said, was at $148.8 million, growth of uh, 10 basis point quarter on quarter, 8.7% year on year. In rupee terms, the revenue was 1,192 crores, a sequential growth of 3.3%, and a year on year growth of 17.8%. Our constant currency revenue growth was at 1.1% for Q2 sequentially. Uh, year on year, the revenue growth was 11%. A bit of Q2 was at $22 million versus $21.9 million in Q1, which represents a growth of about uh, seven, uh, 70 basis points quarter quarter and 7.2% uh, year on year. In INR terms, a bit of was 176 crores versus 170 crores in the prior quarter, and that's a growth of 3.9% quarter on quarter and 16.2% year on year. A bit of margin is to that 14.8% as DK said, and that's an improvement of nine bits on a quarter on quarter basis. Margin improvements uh, were aided by lower cost of service delivery, lower travel costs uh, you know, based on the various actions that we, take, we took internally, higher offshore mix, and productivity improvement overall. Margins were impacted by high cost hiring, which uh, continued due to uh, the, the addition four point that he made. We also had some, uh, you know, retention costs, and, and in addition, we had increments that uh, kicked in effective uh, July 2022. We have had significant improvement in our operating cash flow and free cash flow in the previous quarter. Our operating cash flow uh, was dollar twenty million, and and that represents about ninety two percent of EBITDA. 
as against uh, negative 0.2 million in the first quarter. Our free, free cash flow was $16.8 million, 78% of EBITDA, and it was, it was a negative number in Q1 as well. Our Q2 back to that $14.4 million versus $15.5 million in prior quarter, we down 7.6% quarter on quarter, 2.9% year on year. Um, the call out here, uh, you know, I wanted to make was one, we did have lower finance income because of the, uh, you know, the payouts that we made to us by back in the past quarter. In addition, there was, uh, the, there was an impact on account of my exchange translation on a quarter and quarter basis and that, uh, that caused a reduction in our pack for the quarter. Uh, in rupee terms, the pack to that 115.1 crore versus 120.7 crores in Q1. Um, the ETR in the past quarter was lower at 21.8% uh, versus 25.7% in Q1, and this was because of some tax refunds that uh, we uh, got in the U.S. for prior period. Uh, we expect uh, the the steady state ETR to be between 25 and 26 percent. DSO stood at 56 days. That's an improvement of two days sequentially. Uh, as I said, uh, we did have uh, good cash collections, and uh, you know our cash performance last quarter reflects in the DSO as well. The cash and cash equivalents, including investment, to that 97.7 million dollars. That is 794. 0.7 crores uh, for uh, quarter two versus 152.5 million dollars or 1204 crores in Q1. The reduction is largely in account of the share buyback program that we completed in the second quarter. In conclusion, I believe that we are building on our steady performance. We've been seeing healthy new buildings, improved DSO and moderating acquisition. At the same time, we're closely tracking the macro and geopolitical developments across markets. With this, let me throw this open for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The first question is from the line of Shraddha Agarwal from Asian Market Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Um, so two questions. Uh, given the current macro environment that we are in, how do we look at the revenue growth to the second half? Because if the usual seasonality factor plays out in second half, then we might as well fall short of clocking double-digit growth in FI 23 for the full year versus earlier expectations of 15 percent. And uh, yeah, so please talk to the question. Sorry to interrupt you, ma'am. Your audio is not clear from your line. Better now? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. So I'll repeat the question. So uh, uh, the question was, uh, you know, uh, given uh, the given the demand environment that we are in, how do we look at the revenue growth trajectory in the second half? And also, do you expect the usual seasonality of 2H to play out? And if that is the case, then uh, you know we might fall short of doing double-digit growth in uh, 23 versus earlier expectations of doing 15% growth. So of your comments on demand environment and how do you see 2H stacking up? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Shraddha. Uh, the uh, if I look at the demand environment, uh, uh, you know, so far the, the discussions that I have been having with our clients and the response that we have seen so far, uh, the demand is, um, I would say that 
the clients are being cautious i would say that uh, they are they are they know that the initiatives that they have to take those are very very important initiatives for their business so they are not saying that they are going to drop those initiatives but very clearly i can see the trend where they are taking longer than before to decide and take a decision on awarding the projects at the same time they are extending the timeline that means that they are not dropping the project but they may take longer to finish the project so that the outflow in the cash is lesser but they still have to continue to go ahead with the initiative that they planned so that would mean that uh, you know the execution will become slower because i can clearly see in the quarter 2 that the number of wins if you look at our number of wins are very good the new wins that we had en plus nn is better than the previous quarters but if i continue to look at many of the programs the execution has slowed down where the client is taking time to begin the project okay they are taking longer on that at the same time they are saying that can we finish the project in a longer period of time so that then their cash outflow is planned accordingly so that is what i'm seeing now are we really uh, uh, looking for double digit growth we are still looking for the double digit growth because we believe that we have some significant wins that have been made in this quarter and some of the previous quarter that will start giving us better revenue as the attrition goes down because one of the reason the uh, execution goes slow from our side is the higher attrition and the joining ratio uh, okay uh, uh, getting dropped because of the people not joining in time and this is pretty much with everyone in the industry we are seeing that our impending attrition is now dropping by 4 5% in the quarter 3 uh, you know we are still in the first month but we are already seeing that it is going to be lower than the quarter 2 but that is the case that would mean that we will be able to realize our revenue in a much better way than what we have been able to do in the quarter 1 and quarter 2 so we have the wins uh, we have the projects that have to start at the same time we have to uh, take the uh, revenue realization done in time and i think that quarter 3 from that perspective will be better however there are certain headwinds as you said that uh, seasonality for quarter 3 is always there where you know it is a it is a relatively shorter quarter Now, from the number of days perspective, because of the number of holidays that are there, but we are working on how do we keep our people productive and how do we plan the uh, vacations or other things in such a way that the impact is minimal. At the same time, we are working with our clients in order to really look at what should be the strategy in case any one of them decides that they have to have furlough, because we saw. two cases coming for for low in the quarter 2 as well so we are working on that and at the same time you know uh, we are able to negotiate with our clients as to how will we have a better approach to manage giving the services in the continuous basis so so from that perspective uh, we remain hopeful that yes we will show the double digit growth for the year over on that's helpful sir and um, another question is i mean uh, we saw very strong growth in bfsi so was it to do with some uh, deal ramp up and likewise we saw decline in life sciences so could you call out the reasons for uh, you know Correct. the performance yeah. in these two entities yeah. absolutely yeah bfsi absolutely that uh, there is a good deal uh, there are uh, some new deals at the same time uh, you know we are growing very well with our a couple of large customers okay so for strategy of cross selling is working very well and as i uh, you know have been saying that bfsi as a sector is really finding their 
see it in the digital space in a much more confident way now because they have taken care of their legacy modernization during this time of last three, four quarters or a little more than that. I think BFSI is coming back. With life sciences, uh, uh, I don't see anything wrong with the sector per se, but as you know that we have been, uh, you know, uh, uh, rationalizing some of our revenue uh, uh, in the last quarter because of some of the projects getting finished. But in the quarter two, we did have the furlough also. If that was not going to be there, probably we would have ended up flat. But unfortunately, you know, we got the furlough on the life sciences side. But if I look at the uh, the conversation that we are having with our customers, I don't see if there's any impact on the demand or any challenge with the sector per se. Right, so, and the revenue moderation that we were seeing in the last account in uh, healthcare, is that over and is that a steady account for us now? Yeah, it is a steady account for us now, yes. Sure, sir, that's it. I'll fall back into the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Jain from Anand Rati. Please go ahead. So, just a follow up of the previous one. So, I'm not clear why we are not seeing growth in healthcare vertical or life sciences vertical for many quarters now. It has been, I think, four or five quarters. So, how should we see growth in that vertical and uh, what is causing uh, this stagnation uh, in healthcare yeah. and life sciences? So I would not say the stagnation. If you look at, uh, you know, traditionally, and I think we have to look at the vertical presence that we have in the light of the horizontal work that we have been doing for those customers. If you look at in the, in the life sciences, we were very strong in the enterprise solutions. Okay? And we have started growing on the digital direction there. Uh, if you look at in the life sciences vertical, because of the presence in the enterprise solutions or the ERP, those are the nature of the projects that will eventually finish at some point of time. And the support revenue will be lower than the revenue that was there in the project execution. So there is no movement with respect to whether we have closed any account or something like that. In fact, we continue to win more number of clients also. But because our project-based revenue and ERP revenue was higher in the life sciences, it has shown the impact because uh, we will take, uh, we are taking time in really converting that into the digital. We are growing in the digital data area, cloud area, but of course, it will take time for us to really turn the tide in that direction. So as a follow-up, if we don't have to look at it from a vertical perspective and more from a service line perspective, uh, what is your view on the enterprise solutions given the deal pipeline and the TCVs you have? Uh, it is certainly not growing. What should we expect some declines ahead in enterprise solutions? Uh, no, I don't think that we should expect the declines ahead because, uh, you know, slowly we are reaching to a point where we continue to win and deliver uh, almost similar to what we will continue to, uh, you know, uh, have any drop due to the uh, ERP project completion. So now I think we are in a stage where we should start growing our digital revenue as well as our uh, NOP revenue in this particular area as well. I don't think that we need to look at this from the service line perspective. I am only giving the color right now because uh, because of the shift in the revenue that we have been making. It is a part of thought out strategy because uh, you know we have been able to do very well in the manufacturing space for high tech and. Uh, uh, you know, a CMT space actually, or even if you look at uh, in the BFSI space, we have been able to grow our NOT and digital revenue much, much faster. I think we need to pick up the speed on the life sciences also on that front. And I don't think that this is going to be the case where we continue to see the decline. Uh, but sir, on ERP, do you have any split available like how should we see ERP service line split, like anything which can help us project some projects? You no, know, absolutely we have. We have, 
but it will be like too much of granular uh, information that uh, we will end up reporting because then uh, there are multiple parameters that we look at but at the vertical level at the horizontal level okay we always have a metric structure and when we create the budget as well as when we showcase our revenue report or revenue internally for the mis purpose we look at every dimension in order for us to look at what are the area that need more attention and where is that we need to really put our sales force behind the offerings that we need to sell more and last was there any account transition from on site to offshore during the quarter any project there are there are there are few but there is nothing significant that i would say that uh, uh, there is a you know uh, significant change that has happened yes there is a one large account where we have moved significant number of people from on site to offshore uh, okay uh, because of the compliance related aspects that our client has okay so we have moved significant number of people uh, 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 in that particular account but then there are some of the other accounts where yes we have moved the services to offshore in order for us to address the margin related issues also because at the on site it is becoming difficult to have people as employees more and more contractors are joining so we do not want to be in a position where we have over dependence on the contractors so there is a clear focus on that so that we can move that work to offshore and that does impact us a little bit on the top line but it does help from the bottom line perspective because as you know that we had to go through the increments and everything uh, and and the impact of that was about 2.1% whereas we were able to really uh, you know a claw back approximately 1 to 1.2% uh, you know from uh, the uh, operating levers uh, the margin improvement levers and that that required us to move away from subcontractors moving work from on site to offshore as well uh and the last is on margin like now supply side issues going behind wage hikes done for the year uh what and our margins were quite low compared to previous year so should we expect a drawback towards 16 17% in the next few quarters it will it will uh, i think the moment or not moment actually but the quarter when our attrition starts to coming down down closer to 20% okay uh, then i believe that we can start looking at the upward trend on the margins because there is nothing fundamentally wrong in the execution except that the cost of people has gone up significantly during the uh, you know three four quarters but as we normalize as we bring more and more pressure on board as we uh, correct our pyramid as we migrate some of the work from on site to offshore by uh, you know letting some of the subcontractors go this is going to come up so yes uh, you know uh, i am confident that we will eventually come up to the same level but it is generally a slow movement but we are confident that we will come back to the same level is there any headwind ahead in terms of margin which we are missing like there are plenty of uh, only the only headwind that i'll see will be in the quarter 3 if there is any furloughs that come up okay because uh, if, if there are any furloughs that client after so far there is no pending furlough that we have where client has requested and we have to think about it so far no but quarter 3 is generally known for that now if that happens then that would mean that we will end up taking a little bit of hit and that definitely is a uh, you know uh, uh, headwind on the margin side and then for the support staff we had shifted the increments to a later month okay so that will happen in this month so but but it will not be as much impact as we saw in the quarter 2 so that is another headwind but at the same time we have planned the margin improvement lever also So we continue to work on those because uh, we continue to work on the pyramid correction. We continue to make the uh, pressure available. Continue to bring 
junior people for or against senior people so all that we continue to do in order for us to improve the margins also so how much vidhyak is left like how much impact would it be on pages and how much is done uh, how much impact is left meaning so I, i didn't get the question the third quarter the vidhyak that are planned for support staff how much in fact in terms of basis uh, i believe about 0.8 to 1% not uh, because uh, significant piece about 65 70% hit we have taken already in the quarter 2 So quarter two is around two percent uh, impact, is it? That's right, yeah. And one percent will come in third quarter. Okay. Done. Done, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bipesh Mehta from MK Global Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. Just want to get sense about the quarter two performance. whether it played out in line with your expectation at the beginning of quarter if better or weaker than what you expected can you help us understand what sectors played out uh, second thing is about what areas of weakness or pocket of weakness if you can help us understand where you are seeing signs of weakness emerging thank you yeah not of lower than our expectations because i expected it to be much better Uh, okay, uh, because uh, uh, when I look at the wins, okay, uh, we were confident that I think we'll be able to realize the revenue, but we have not been able to realize as much as we would have liked it to be. Okay, uh, for example, I talked about two programs in the quarter one, which got delayed. One of the programs started in the middle of the quarter for quarter two, but the other one did not. Okay. uh so so our expectation definitely from the quarter were high then the uh, then the other headwind that i talked about that happened was furlough uh okay uh, then there was a project that got finished while we knew that the project will finish but we expected that the client is it was it was known that the client will actually go for uh, some of the extended work on that direction Uh, before they get into the support and maintenance but they decided that they will do that extension only uh, uh, in the later part of the financial year so that also did not come so there were those things that happened which i which which at macro level i talked about that there is a slower execution or slower realization that has happened uh, during the quarter 2 uh, so to answer in answer your question in short uh what we have delivered is definitely lesser than what we thought we could deliver and just to probe it further is it a more execution kind of issues if it is execution kind of issues what we are doing it to improve from here on so such similar things should not happen into coming quarters and and the second question i think yet to be answered about pocket of weakness which areas you are seeing some weakness yeah so if i look at uh, you know uh, 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 do we know that what are the area uh, that we need to focus okay because uh, the, what question that you have asked both the questions or the parts are very similar in nature that uh, do we know what are the weaker area that we need to address or what is that that we don't uh, repeat in the coming quarter so so yes absolutely we we uh, have identified one that if you look at we need to look at how do we get the better realization of the revenue for the deals that we have won okay and that required uh, uh, you know speed at which we can hire the talent and we can uh, you know uh, uh, upscale or reskill Uh, the existing employee so that we can redeploy them into the other engagement so that is one very clear focus area that we identified not only in the quarter 2 but we identified actually in the quarter 4 and quarter 1 that we will have to address that because attrition is not going to go away very very soon and hence we need to be better prepared and even when the attrition becomes better to correct our pyramid we will have to reskill and redeploy our people okay or the junior uh, uh, engineer that we hire so from that perspective you would have even noticed that we have partnered with coursera 
uh, and we came out with that uh, uh, you know partnership uh, this week. We announced that partnership this week, and the objective is very clear that how do we now get connected with the colleges so that we train them there and bring. Now, will that give me the benefit in quarter three? No, but in quarter four and quarter one, I will start seeing some benefit coming from the students that I get who get trained initially and then we hire them for that. The time to make them productive in our organization is much shorter. At the same time, we are making all the content available to all, each employee within the organization so that the training can happen in a far more effective manner and cross-selling and upskilling can happen in a far more effective manner. That's the that's one revenue realization because of the PDR talent acquisition and all that is something that, in my opinion, is a major focus area because it's not that we have not been hiring. We have been hiring, but at the same time, when uh, the attrition is high, the incremental hiring is only so much, and that means that you are not able to realize the revenue that you thought you would be able to do because you continued having wins. So that is the challenge that is the top most in our mind. At the same time, uh, we need to uh, really look at, I talked about the life sciences uh, uh, just in the previous uh, questions, uh, that where is that we need to grow our annuity revenue? Where is that we need to grow our uh, digital revenue is also another focus area. Uh, uh, you know, uh, because of the digital projects and the enterprise projects, Okay, the annuity revenue always stood at around 70% for us. But looking at the way market is moving now, we are planning that how do we go after the deal so that we can actually move our annuity revenue from 70% to 75% so that we can become more sustainable going forward. I think those are the specific area on top of my mind that surgically we need to address in order for us to become more predictable and sustainable with the revenue. Understand. And the last part is about in which vertical or which sub-vertical you are seeing uh, signs of weakness. Thank you. Yeah. So our, our, I believe that we will remain strong in the manufacturing and uh, manufacturing, CMP, and BFSI. We will remain uh, strong and we continue to see very good momentum coming from our uh, key clients. Uh, the life sciences as well as the emergent utility is one where we have to really uh, push harder. Uh, I am very hopeful that we should be able to turn the tide and start moving up in both of the verticals very soon. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sandeep Shah from Equitas Securities, please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the unity. Uh, just wanted to understand, DK, uh, what is the definition of our double digit growth aspiration for FY 2023? Will it be close to 10% or will it be less than 15 as a whole? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I believe that, uh, uh, you know, it will be higher than 10% and lesser than 15%. That is, that is looking more and more apparent uh, uh, there, okay. Uh, while it may appear that it will be closer to the 10%, but we are really pushing hard as to how do we, uh, how do we recoup the, uh, you know, uh, lost ground that we had in the quarter one and quarter two. So that we can inch towards 15 percent. That's the way I look at current, uh, uh, you know, view uh, with respect to the uh, uh, annual growth where we see ourselves. Okay, okay. And uh, can you share what was the subcontracting cost in this quarter and the last quarter? Uh, Chandru, do you have that uh, data handy with you? If you can share that. Yeah, I, I do. Uh, the subcontract is spending uh, in dollar terms was flat quarter on quarter. While we did have a reduction in subcontractors around the end of the quarter, we expect to see an improvement in the third quarter. 
Okay. So, I just wanted to understand, uh, in the reply to previous question, you still uh, say that demand fulfillment because of supply side issues continues to remain an issue. So, uh, if subcontractor is being available, why we are not able to fulfill? And the demand fulfillment as an issue because of attrition is actually now four to six quarters been persistent for the industry. Why are we still not working on this and not getting a proper handle and we are still calling out that this is an issue in terms of an execution as a whole? No, I think we are we are addressing, but I would say that probably we haven't seen the as much benefit as we would like to see uh, for for various reasons because uh, it is also that the nature of people that you require, the nature of engagements and the deals that you are winning. Okay, so there are multiple things uh, that are there. At the same time, how do we try to have a fine balance between the, uh, you know, uh, 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 top line and the bottom line so that, you know, uh, we don't uh, sacrifice the margin too much just by running after uh, the top line also. So there are multiple factors uh, that are there. Uh, I mean, we 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 expect that I mean we should have done better on that front. But but uh, you know uh, the end result is that the net addition that we had it was more than that we planned for because the uh, attrition did happen. While it has you know shaped better than the previous quarter, but it is still. Uh, significantly high uh, to the level that it is still uncomfortable for any business. And I think uh, that is what we want to address. Uh, it has started working, not that we have not taken the action. We have taken the action, it has started working. As I said, that if I look at the impending attrition for the quarter three, it is looking to be much, much better than the attrition that we had in the quarter two. Okay. So, uh, so we need to continue to remain watchful. We need to continue to work on the cost of resources that we hire. At the same time, how do we continue to reduce the attrition? So it is showing the result, but probably you are not able to see as much result in the quarter two. I hope that you'll be able to see that more in quarter three. And just a related question, uh, we are doing well in terms of new business PCB quarter on quarter, but that is not getting translated in the revenue almost now three quarters in a row where our growth is lower than your internal budgets as well. So is it the nature of the deals which we are signing are more project based versus our aspiration was to balance out both sides and improve the annuity side of the business? So why are we are not focused this despite this was one of the key objectives uh, which you highlighted when you were actually uh, merged to KPIT's uh, revenue with yourself because at that time also we have done well but still looks like uh, the project-based revenue continues to remain higher and client specific issue keeps cropping up despite that uh, and because of which the new business PCB is not getting translated uh, into the revenue. Correct. See, uh, uh, I think uh, your question had the answer in it. Uh, you know, uh, we were doing well with 70-71% of the NOT when the project sizes were bigger, okay? As we are moving forward, the project sizes have become smaller and the duration also has become smaller for those projects. And that's the reason that the NOP at 70-71% may not be seen enough, okay? We did a good root cause analysis during this quarter as to what is that is not working well because we are having the wins that are required, okay? So then why the realization is not there? And I'm not saying realization from the perspective of the attrition or floor talent hiring. That is a that is a known fact, okay, or the market situation. But there is more that we can do with respect to the NOT revenue. And that's the reason that now I'm upping our goal for moving from 70, 71% to 75% because if this is the kind of nature of the project that is going to happen, probably we need a higher annuity revenue. So I think we need to really work on uh, going after such deals where we can sign it for the longer period 
so that the runoff revenue that we have uh, seen in the quarter two and some in actually in the quarter one also, uh, if we can reduce that percentage, then it will be better. There will always be some cases where runoff revenue will be there, but then that percentage has to be reduced so that we it, so that it leads us to the growth higher than that we are seeing right now. Okay. And just last two questions. Uh, 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 is it fair to say these project-based revenues which are not getting started are still there in the order book? And once the macro issue may stabilize, there could be blowout quarters or is it uh, where clients are actually scrapping this project and those impacts may not come when the uh, macro issue stabilizes? Second, uh, how to look at margins in the Q3, Q4? Is it fair to say it may remain flat or may not decline or there could be an upward bias? And third, looking at offshore transition, uh, is it fair to say the volume growth is much higher versus the constant currency of 1.1%? Yeah, so uh, if you look at on the uh, margin side, we are working towards uh, you know, uh, um, getting back the hit that we have because of the increments or higher people costs, okay, so that we continue to work on that. As I said, that it is a slower process, okay, uh, and as the attrition uh, comes under control, I think uh, uh, it will pick up the pace and we will be able to show the upward trend on our margin side. With the headwinds, headwinds that we have in the quarter three, I believe that we should uh, try to, uh, you know, maybe move up a little bit. Otherwise, even if I am uh, I am flat quarter and quarter, I'll be very happy. Because if I'm flat quarter and quarter, that means I've taken care of the increment headwind or, the, or any other shorter quarter headwind uh, successfully. And if I come flat in quarter, that will also mean that my quarter four is going to become much better. Because with the same run rate, okay, we will be able to deliver definitely much better margin in the quarter four. So it will move upward, but quarter three is a tricky quarter, as you all know. So we need to be watchful on that front. Um, since you asked, I think a couple of questions in your statement probably and I missed what was the other point that you were talking about. Yeah. If you can repeat, then I can answer. Yeah, two things. Uh, uh, because there is a longer conversion cycle of projects into revenue conversion, uh, is it fair to say these projects will stay in the order book or there could be scrap of the projects because of macro issue? And if they stay in the order book... So far, book, I'm not seeing. So far... I haven't seen where the client has dropped the project. I have seen the cases where they have slowed down. For example, one of our manufacturing client, okay, who was supposed to go live in the quarter three, now they have extended that to the end of quarter four. That means that, you know, uh, you now you are going to spread the same level of revenue across the two quarters, okay, the remaining revenue across the two quarters. So from that perspective, the project is not dropped. But I had to reduce my team that is working on the program in order for me to finish it by that time. So from that perspective, the revenue realization has become lower on those cases. But I haven't seen your customer said that, let us drop the project, I don't have the money because that is not the conversation. Thankfully, that's not the conversation that we are seeing. Okay, okay. And Chandru, sir, can somebody answer? predicted the, you know, if somebody predicted the doom that, uh, you know, because of recession, there will be a negative growth and all that. We are not anticipating that. Okay, I know that our growth could have been better in this quarter, but, but uh, uh, that doesn't mean that uh, uh, now we are, uh, too worried on that front. Okay. okay. And last question which I asked was, Chandru sir, if you can reply whether is it fair to say volume growth has been recently higher than 1.1% constant currency revenue growth because of the offshore shift? Yeah, so please, a short answer to the question is yes. Uh, because of the on-site offshore uh, flip that DK was talking about, 
the the effective volume was higher if you look at the number of the hours that you deployed, but uh, the revenue was obviously low because of the differential rates that you look at. Okay, possible to disclose that volume growth or? Um, you know, it will be too much of information, uh, Sandeep, uh, but I can give you some broad details. I don't have it handy, but, uh, you know, I got on a banner, I will get back to you. No issue. All thanks and all the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, to ask a question, you may press star and one. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1. The next question is from the line of Devashish Majumdar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good evening. Thank you very much for the opportunity and wish you all a very happy day. Uh, uh, so most of my questions have been answered. Uh, one small query that I have is, uh, it is very clear that situation has become uncertain, uh, especially for us, maybe. Uh, and uh, in this scenario, how the pricing thing is moving for us? Are we able to pass on the prices? I understand because of offshore shifts, we are not able to improve realization in this quarter. But is the rate card improvement or COLA adjustments are happening or we are facing difficulties there? Yeah. So it is happening. Uh, it is happening. In fact, uh, uh, with a very large client, we just finished our negotiation on that front. And uh, and then we will be getting the price increase and all that uh, 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 very soon. So all that uh, negotiations are happening. Uh, the clients are agreeing also. There are other cases where we are getting the pushback also because client says they also have challenges on their side. But uh, are you able to hear me? Hello. I was I audible? Yeah, you. Please proceed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so... Uh, so if I uh, look up from that perspective, I think it is still... Uh, 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 moving up on the existing engagements. Uh, uh, okay, in a in a in a manner that uh, we have kind of uh, you know we are tracking it and we are taking it up with the client so that we continue to sign up for the better prices. However, when it comes to the newer deals that we are signing, that all is coming with the higher margin and with the higher prices because. We have updated our price list, and any new deal that we go after, we go with the new price only. So, so we continue to work on the you know multi-pronged uh, strategy in order for us to get the better prices for the services that we deliver. Thank you. The current participant has left the question queue. Reminder to the participant. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Dubirex from Cumulus Systems. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, sir. This is regarding our aspiration target of one billion. Is there a shift in it? And second would be on the acquisition plans. Is there any update on this? Thank you. Uh, no, there is no no change in our plan for uh, being $1 billion. Uh, we, we continue uh, to keep that as a goal because one quarter here and there can always happen. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, that doesn't mean that we have to change our goals. So right now we are keeping that goal to become a $1 billion at the time that we decided. Okay. And regarding acquisition, sir, mm -hmm. any update on this, sir? On the acquisition, sir? Is there any update on that, sir? Uh, there's no new update uh, as of now. Uh, uh, I mean, the only thing that I can say is that the uh, the hunt is on for the right candidate, but there is no 
update worth mentioning where we have moved forward in a in a uh, you know more definite way got it sir. because the reason i was asking is uh, with the 1 billion target a target there was a confident of the inorganic uh, is also coming into it right sir Correct. So, correct. Correct. That's why I was asking if there is any shift in the timeline mm-hmm. or anything like that. So your question is absolutely the correct question. Yes. That's the plan. Okay. So, so the timeline won't be affected because of what which is the plan. The target timeline won't no. be affected. Yeah, no, no. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, we are keeping the plan with us. Okay. So thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Participants to ask a question, you may press star and one. A reminder to the participants anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time A reminder to the participants anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time The next question is from the line of Devang Bhat from IDBI Capital. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, sorry to prod you on the same thing, but uh, if there are macro headwinds, uh, there is uh, you know challenges in life science, ENU, and furloughs in Q3. So for us to even cross 10% uh, is seems difficult. So what gives you the confidence that you will be able to manage? No, uh, see. Uh, uh, despite having the uh, number of wins and uh, the visibility uh, that doesn't mean that i don't have to call a headwind or headwind okay there are headwinds that are there but at the same time we continue to work on the plans that how do we uh, uh, significantly improve on our top line as well as on the bottom line uh, so headwinds are so oh, support me there and they are there uh, but but to have plans uh, the objective should be that when we when we are hit uh, okay at that point of time do we stand up and make a plan in order to correct this situation and i think we are we are in control and uh, we know what action we have to take so that uh, we improve on uh, both our top line and bottom line okay sir thank you Thank you. Participants to ask a question, you may press star and one. A reminder to the participants: anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. participants to ask a question you may press star and 1 okay. operator if you don't have a question i think uh, we are also uh, you know uh, finished or yes one or if there is no question then Uh, probably in the queue. Uh, yeah, can I just give a closing remarks in that case? Sure. I'll just give a closing remarks on that case. That uh, so uh, once again, thank you very much uh, for joining the call. Uh, as I said, probably actually my closing remarks are the same. That I just said uh, as an answer to the last question that. Uh, now uh, you know we need to continue to look at what are the area of improvement for us we need to this passionately or sometimes passionately also can look at that these are the uh, uh, points that we need to address in order for us to become more and more sustainable and predictable i think we moved the needle quite a bit uh, okay in the last three years but looks like that uh, we once again have to Uh, work harder in order for us to uh, improve our annual revenue, or also continue to look at that 
uh, we bring back the growth in the verticals where we have seen a uh, decline. So we'll continue to work on that, and I absolutely remain optimistic that uh, we will be able to uh, bring back the growth and the margins that is going to cheer all of you. With that, uh, let me wish all of you a very happy Diwali. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Villa Soft Limited, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.